welcome to the ISID Speaker Series. My name is Michael Brown. I'm a professor of practice here at the Institute for the Study of International Development at McGill University. And I'm very pleased you are joining us today. And I'm also very pleased to introduce um, Professor Christian Novak, a colleague of mine here at ISID and a fellow professor of practice. Christian is CEO of Delphos International, FMA. He provides advisory services in the field of development finance and impact investing. His experience combines investment banking with economic and social development. And he has worked for international banks and a prominent regional development financial institution. So greetings, Professor Novak and to get us starting, uh, get us started, I'm hoping we can just learn a little bit about your work and your thinking around development financing. So Professor Novak, um, I know your research and your papers and lectures all relate to development financing in general. I'm hoping that you can help us understand today what specific aspects of this topic interest you the most and why have you been attracted to these particular issues? Thank you very much, uh, Michael. Um, as you just mentioned at ECIT, my works, they focus on the area of development financing, particularly on topics that relate to the effective use of public and private capital to help achieve the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Like most of you are, I'm concerned about the fact that we are off track to achieve the sustainable development goals. The 2030 agenda was adopted already six years ago, and we're only nine years away from the year 2030. I had welcomed the phrase, leaving no one behind, which was a very compelling phrase when the agenda was adopted. But sadly, we are actually leaving many behind and the agenda's main call to action to end poverty is also unfortunately not getting the necessary attention and actions. I have a financial background as you described before, and feeling touched by these circumstances, I chose to focus my works at ESIT on topics that relate to the effective use of public and private capital to help achieve the SDGs. Thanks, Christian. Now, I'm wondering if we can dig a little deeper. Can you give me a bit more understanding of the specific aspects of development financing that you focus on in particular? Yeah, indeed, Michael. A key reason for being off track to achieve the SDGs is that not enough capital is being directed to achieve them. There is an estimated 4.2 trillion US dollars annual shortfall to achieve the SDGs in developing countries. Development finance, which is supposed to play a relevant role in deploying capital for addressing the SDGs, has disproportionately benefited upper and lower middle income countries. In addition, development finance and aid are underserving large segments of the neediest populations in relation to the priority sectors, education, health, and energy. As you can imagine, COVID has obviously exacerbated the situation. The estimated annual financial gap to achieve the SDGs was actually 2.5 trillion US dollars before COVID, which was already pretty high, but it's now 4.2 trillion US dollars per annum, as I just mentioned. The effect of value change. The effect of micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, which drive most developing economies, has been devastating. Global foreign direct investments decreased 38% in 2020. Remittances decreased drastically, and capital outflows in developing countries have been huge almost twice as much as those that occurred in the financial crisis in comparable relative terms. 
The economic consequences are obvious, but consider also that inequalities have been accentuated and over 120 million people moved into extreme poverty to levels that existed before 2017. And most importantly, it's been the first increase in poverty since 1998. So Michael, development finance must play a better role in attending the SDGs. Of course, aid must also be strengthened as well. However, Note that the 2030 Agenda is based on the concept of global partnership, which contemplates mobilizing all means of implementation. So increasing the volume of private capital directed to the SDGs completes the paramount needs to bridge the financial gap and advance the 2030 Agenda allocating just a minimum portion of the volume of private capital to developmental projects and needs would lead us to achieve the SDGs. Thanks, Christian. Now, given the many challenges that exist to, to achieve the SDGs, I'm wondering if you could highlight a few ideas, particularly from a development finance perspective that you think could be helpful in helping achieve them. And as I say this, you know, I know that you've been advocating certain ideas in your work here at ISID in policy briefs and in presentations you've been doing. So I'm wondering if you could share some of those ideas with us today. Certainly, Michael. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, development finance must play a better role in attending the SDGs. And, uh, specifically the operating models and methods of development finance institutions and of multilateral development banks must be updated in order to achieve a higher effectiveness. Financial additionality may be elevated, for example, by utilizing simply a wider variety of financial products that have existed in the financial sector in the mainstream financial sector for ages. I am specifically referring to the increased use of guarantees, equity investments, as well as any financial product that could be tailored to the specific needs and towards achieving the highest possible additionality. This is something that together with other colleagues, including Professor Grimard, we have been advocating for. And you particularly highlighted one of our policy briefs that were published was published back in June of 2018. We also make reference to the fact that a large increase in the mobilization of private capital is also key. The ODI, which is an independent think tank, which is based in the UK, recently uh, delivered a report that provides data that is based on latest information and concluded that in 2019, the MDBs mobilized only 52 cents for each dollar of own capital. And bilateral development financial institutions mobilized only 82 cents for the dollar. While this ratio, you would agree with me, should be a multiple, and not a fraction, actually. So again, such institutions can use mobilization tools that have been used by the mainstream financial sector for many, many years. I am in this case referring, for example, to the use of securitizations, credit insurances, and other instruments. A much better use of public capital, including through the use of the so-called blended finance, could attract relevant volumes of private capital. And then finally, even the specific balance sheets of multilateral development banks and of development financial institutions may be optimized further. And improved governance practices are also possible. Both of these matters could help improve their operating models and methods and consequently 
achieve higher effectiveness. Thank you, Christian. Um, thank you very much. I really appreciate your sharing your ideas with us today and also for linking your thoughts on development fa financing and related tools to the SDGs. I found it very interesting and I certainly hope others have as well. Now, I also wanna thank all of you who've been joining us today. And finally, please keep your eyes on this space to hear more from other ISID professors of practice. Thank you very much. And thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Michael.